Hello. Okay, next tutorial. This time I did the makeups from the new Stephen King's It remake. So I'm currently meant to be It or Pennywise. Yeah. It's a super cool and unique take on the Tim Curry version of Pennywise. Obviously no one can beat Tim Curry's version, but I have done the original Pennywise makeup, which I'll pop in the description bar below if you wanted to check that out. But it is really cool they took it in this direction, this kind of period clown, I love it. At the time of recording this, the teaser trailer only just came out, so the film itself isn't released yet. So I've only had a few reference photos and the teaser trailers go off of where you don't really see much of Pennywise himself. So hopefully I've got the makeup kind of close. I suppose we won't know until the film comes out, but if it's wrong, I'm really sorry, I tried my best. <laughs> if you'd like to learn how to recreate it, stay tuned. So the first thing I'm going to do is block out my eyebrows and pop on a plain latex ball cap. To learn how to do those things, I'll pop two links in the description bar below. Those videos will take you to two videos that I did in the past to teach you guys how to do both those things, so I don't have to recap it in this video to make it a bit shorter. So yeah, I'm going to do both those things and get back to you. So there we are. So once I applied my ball cap and blocked out my brows, I went over the edge of my ball cap, going around my ears with about two to three layers of liquid latex just to get rid of that edge. I say go around my ears because we do need the ears sort of showing for this look. Then I'm going to take some more liquid latex and a sponge, and I'm going to go over my forehead and over my brows. It's worth noting that when I blocked out my eyebrows, I went over the spirit gum wax with another layer of spirit gum just to completely seal them off so it's safe to go over with liquid latex. And I'm going to do that for about two to three coats just to build it up a little bit, and then I can start working on adding tissue and making it a very thick brow. So then I can take some tissue paper that I've already separated, so I've got the thinner strips and working in really, really thin little strips. I can use that to start building up his angry brow because it seems like his brow is incredibly thick at the base, which not only makes the eyes look angry, but it also gives a nice ridge, which gives the illusion of the eyebrow. Because I don't think he's got a coloured in eyebrow, I think it's just the shadow of his actual brow. So I'm going to take some latex, apply that in the middle part of my head. And that's the only area I'm going to be working with the tissue. Then I can take the tissue, apply that in the centre first, press it down, and then saturate that with latex. So I can do that for around seven coats in the middle, three coats on the sides, and then one coat leading out to just latex. That way it thins itself out. So the method behind this is going to be letting it dry between each layer, then every now and again pushing with your thumbs, just forcing the brow to be that angry expression, and then letting that dry, and then repeating the process for, as I said, about seven times in the middle. Okie dokie, so I've built up my latex and so now it's nice and dry and sufficiently angry looking. So then I can start on the base. So I'm going to colour my neck and my face and my ears and my ball cap in a white matte chroma cake. So just a really nice watercolour. <laughs> So then I can work on the mouth, which is also, funnily enough, the eye art. So for that, I'm going to take a MAC Red Chroma Cake watercolour and a super, super fine but firm brush. And I'm going to start lightly tracing out the shape that I want. It seems to go around and then up. It's fairly difficult at this stage to tell because the only reference photos I have really are showing him smiling. So it does distort the lines a little bit, but I think we can get the general idea. So it goes around and then through the eyes. So I'm going to do it really lightly and then thicken it up afterwards. So there we are. So once I was happy with the shape, I went over the red with a, and it's going to sound weird, but a superstar wound filling paste. This is actually a really thick, bright red cream. So if you use it light enough, you can get this really beautiful shine and a really nice crisp edge over the red watercolour. I just think it looks really pretty and stands out. So then I can take a Crowell and Face Liner pencil, and I'm just going to go around the edge of my lips, just to make the lips stand out a little bit more. Then, taking the matte chroma cake red again, I can apply that in three circles on the end of my nose, a large one in the middle and two little ones I have aside, and then I can blend that colour upwards by about half a centimetre. Then I'm just going over that with the red wound filler by Superstar. Then I'm just going to take a Makeup Forever Flash palette, and I'm only going to be using the black from this palette, so you can get the black cream separately. And I'm just super lightly with that, I don't want much black, just a suggestion of it. I'm just going to dab that over the very edges of the nose, even the blended edge, because it's going to be blended but not super neat. Then I'm going to take a MAC Black Chroma Cake watercolour, and with that I'm going to line underneath my eyes and on top. 
So no wing, just literally around the edge of my eye. Then to get rid of any pink in my waterline of my eyes, I'm gonna use a MAC fluid line in black track and make sure to color in the top waterline as well. Then I can take the black cream by Makeup Forever once again. And I'm gonna lightly, using hardly any of the color, start tracing out the shape of the brow furrow that I built in. The idea is to draw the line really faintly and then blend that upwards. Okie dokie. So the shape I've gone for goes around and high arched, but I've blended it out and I've made it as light as possible so that it does still look like the brows that he's got, but also light enough to possibly be the brow furrow. So then I continue the red line going through the mouth and the eyes going upwards. So these are two spikes going from the eyes all the way up to about there. So for this, I'm gonna use the matte Chroma Cake Red watercolor, exactly the same as I did on the mouth, and then I'm gonna go over that with the Superstar Wound Filler, but only on this half, because if I use the wound filler, which is the cream on my eyelids, it will stay wet and it'll end up just smearing over my eyelids. Plus having a thick cream on the eyelids isn't always comfy. Then I'm just gonna rustic this whole makeup up with a black hairspray. So rather than spraying it directly on my face, I'm gonna aim it at arm's length, obviously doing this in a well-ventilated area and breathing in before you do it. I'm gonna really lightly hold down the hairspray and spackle it all over my face, just to break up the texture and make it a little less clean. Because that's one of the most unnerving things about this type of makeup, it's got very clean, crisp lines, yet the foundation, the costumes, the hair is all very messy and rustic. Okie dokie, so then I'm gonna use the hairspray again, but make it quite a bit darker along the back of my ball cap. Now a lot of that is gonna be covered with the fake hair I'm gonna apply next, but I want the effect to get darker as it goes up. So for the hair, in complete contrast to Tim Curry's version, the hair has a V shape, starting obviously really far back, but it's also considerably shorter. It's also a lot more kept, it's all sprayed back and up. And also the colour isn't red from what I can tell, I could be wrong, I mean there's a scene of him coming out of the water where it's very 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 dark, which suggests that it could be like a light brown slash orange. So the hair I'm going to use is from this brown almost orange wig that I've had for quite a while now, it's a very frizzy, very messy wig. So I'm just going to brush it out, cut some of the hair off and then layer it on with spirit gum. So I'm going to work downwards then up. It's not going to take too much hair, but I think I'm going to start from the back and then work my way forwards into the V shape. So just take a layer of spirit gum, apply it in one area on a line, and then stick the hair down at the base, and then apply that in a brick fashion. So say for example, two pieces here, and then one piece in the middle, then two pieces here, then one piece in the middle, that kind of thing, just so you don't end up having rows of hair. You want it all to seamlessly blend in. Okie dokie, so we're left with this. Yeah. So after I finished applying the hair, I sprayed it back and up with some Tresemme Freeze Hold hairspray just to keep it all in place. And there's not much else to do with this look. I mean, I could obviously do eye bags, I could do wrinkles, I could do more shading, I could make it a lot more gruesome. But as I'm going off the teaser art, and I have done a Pennywise makeup before in the past, which you'll probably find in the description bar below, where the character was half melting and angry, and it was just more him towards the end of the film. This, I would imagine, is the new Pennywise at the beginning of the film where he doesn't look completely evil, but you can tell he's evil. But mostly, he's a clown with scary eyebrows and teeth. So what I'm saying is I think I'm pretty much done, so I'm just gonna go pop in some contact lenses, pop on my costume, and pop in some fake teeth. And there we go, that's my look officially complete. So I finished the look off by popping in a pair of fangs, which is making this really difficult for me to talk because they're in the middle and they're quite big. <laughs> but these are scarecrow fangs, I've just molded them to fit the middle of my teeth, because that seems to be the one major difference in this character from the previous Tim Curry version. The teeth, rather than being a full set of jagged fangs, are just the middle pointy teeth, which is really cool and really unique and kind of cute. <laughs> The contact lenses I used are regular yellow contact lenses from CamoEyes.com. I'll pop their link in the description bar below. And the costume is a super makeshift costume, so I hope it's okay. I actually bought this beautiful neck collar from Ikea, of all places. Same with the cuffs. I just made it a bit more dirty and rustic looking with some black hairspray. The shirt is part of like an Edwardian type costume I got from BuyCostumes.com. And I also popped on two white gloves. And the red pom-poms I made myself because they're super simple to make and they're really cute. <laughs> 
It's really cool because his costume seems to be completely like black and white or cree, which is very one tone. So the red hair and makeup and pom-poms really do like stand out and I think that looks really cool. So yeah, that's my Pennywise costume from the new 2017 movie. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like it, please make sure to, you know the usual, rate, comment, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you could share this with any other Stephen King horror fans, I'd really appreciate that. And yeah, so until next time guys, bye!